from Adventist World Radio in Pune. A very warm welcome to you as you join us. This is our international English service. Today in our program we bring music from heritage singers and Paul Hockey. A health message and back aches. Followed by a story for children and ending our program with God's word entitled Seven Words from the Cross. I am Sharad. I am Sophia. And you are listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope.
song entitled Love Song by Paul Hokip on Adventist World Radio. We now have Anita, a nurse, speak about back aches. My back aches. How many times have you said that? What causes back aches and what can be done about it? Dozens of things can cause back aches. You may have lifted a heavy object improperly. Your foot has slipped causing a sudden twist in your back. You may be overweight, resulting in too much strain on your back muscles. Menstruation is commonly and normally accompanied by back pains. Poor posture may also be the culprit. If your back commonly aches for any of these reasons, you might be able to prevent the recurrence of the problem. There are several things you can do to correct the situation. When you sit, Use a hard chair and put your spine up against it. Keep one or both knees higher than your hips. A small stool will help you do that. When you stand, keep your lower back flat. Never lean forwards without bending your knees. High heels are more likely to cause back aches than low heels. When you sleep, use a firm mattress. You may need to put a piece of plywood under your mattress if it's too soft don't sleep on your stomach if you sleep on your back a pillow under your knees may help if you sleep on your side keep your legs bent at the knees and at the hips when you drive sit close enough to the wheels so that your legs are not fully extended when you work the pedals when you lift objects Bend your knees and use your leg muscles to lift. Avoid sudden movements. Try not to lift heavy object high over your head. When you work, change your position frequently. If you work at a desk all day, get up and move around whenever you can. When you exercise, start slowly and loosen up before attempting strenuous activity. These simple steps will save you from many of the nagging aches you feel in your back. Sometimes the explanation for back aches is more serious. Common cause of serious problems includes cancer of the vertebra, meningitis, osteoarthritis of the spine, osteoporosis, pelvic disease, tuberculosis of the spine and a slip disc. If your back problems are severe and prolonged, You should have a doctor find the problem and suggest the treatment. Thank you Anita for being on our program. To know more about our program, we request you to write to us. Here's our mailing address. Adventist World Radio, Post Box number 17, Pune, 41101, Maharashtra, India. Children, here's a story for you entitled Only a dog told by our friend Diamond. Hello, today our story is about a very loyal and devoted dog. Shep to most people was only a dog, a furry, good-natured collie. But to Mr. McMahon, a lonely laborer, he was a pal, a friend, yes, a part of his life. When home from work, this man and his dog spent many happy hours together. One day Mr McMahon fell down a flight of stairs and seriously injured his head an ambulance was called to take him to the hospital Shep squeezed into the ambulance and cuddled up as close as possible to his master whining and licking the man's face as if he knew something was wrong and he wanted to encourage his friend as Mr McMahon was carried from the ambulance into the hospital Shep kept close beside him. The man was wheeled along the corridor and into a waiting elevator. Shep tried to get in too, but a man in white said, "No dogs allowed." It was hard for McMahon to be separated from his pal. He saw the look in Shep's eyes, and leaning forward, he stroked the dog's head and whispered to him, "It's all right, Shep, old pal. I'll be back soon." You wait for me here. That changed the expression in the dog's eyes. He had heard the, that command before, 
when his master had gone into some building or some home where dogs could not go. So Shep settled down by the elevator to wait patiently for his master's return. I wish I could tell you that MacMahon did come back and that he and Shep lived together happily ever after, but he didn't come back. He died the next day and was carried out through another entrance to the undertaker. Shep didn't know what had happened to his friend. He knew he had said, Wait for me, Shep, and I'll come back. And his master had never failed him. He must wait. Each time the elevator reached that floor, the dog was ready to spring forward to meet his master. For more than ten years, Shep waited at the elevator for the return of MacMahon. The nurses arranged a nice soft mat for him and brought him food and water. Shep made friends with doctors, nurses and visitors. They coaxed him out now and then for exercise and fresh air. But he was always anxious to get back to his post of waiting. He must not fail his master. For ten long years, he kept watch for a friend who never returned. And the saddest part of the story is that no one could explain to him just what had happened. Only a dog? Yes, just a dog. But where would one find truer loyalty and devotion? You heard Diamond tell a story on Adventist World Radio. The Bible says, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Philippians 2.28 Before you hear God's word, stay tuned for the next song by Heritage Singers.
I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday. You just heard a song I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary on Adventist World Radio. For our thought today, we have a message on seven words from the cross presented by Frederick Paul. A man's last words are always remembered by those who love him. On three of the four gospel writers, Matthew, Luke and John record seven sentences that the Lord Jesus Christ spoke upon the cross just before he died. These seven sayings from the cross show what filled our Savior's heart when he was dying and made his love overflow in words. There was no preacher like Jesus, no pulpit like the cross, no congregation like that which was and is gathered around it. Number one, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke twenty three thirty four. Christ prayed for his enemies in their ignorance and guilt. It was their privilege to know and accept Jesus as their Savior, but they had not done it. Their ignorance did not remove their guilt. Some would even yet repent and look back with remorse to this scene. Yet through them God's purpose was reaching its fulfillment. In this prayer, Father, forgive them. We see love and only love, and it is love for the unlovely. Christ is revealed as the intercessor who is heard of God. No curses on his tormentors, no vengeance invoked on those who drove the nails, but pity and a plea for their forgiveness, for they know not what they do. Number two, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Luke twenty three forty three. This promise was an answer to a prayer, a brief eleventh hour prayer it was too. How terribly short was the time that the poor condemned thief had to devote to the business of eternity, but he made use of it. His prayer was an act of worship, Lord, remember me. It was an act of supplication, Lord, remember me. And what does such a prayer not cover? The record of the dying thief offers no encouragement to anyone to put off repentance, but it does offer encouragement to all who are sincerely desirous of being saved. Verily, I say unto you today, you will be with me in paradise, as if he should say, On this day when all others have forsaken me, you have believed in me and called me Lord and asked to be remembered when I come into my kingdom. So today, the day of my rejection, humiliation and death, even today, do I declare that your prayer will be granted. Turn you to the stronghold. Ye prisoners of hope, even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Number three, behold thy mother. This was Christ's third saying from the cross as the eyes of Jesus wander over the multitude about him. They fall upon a figure which arrests his attention. At the foot of the cross stands his mother, no doubt supported by the beloved apostle John. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. In this third saying from the cross, Jesus provided a home for his mother. Someone has beautifully said that John understood Christ's words and accepted the trust. He at once took Mary to his home and from that hour cared for her tenderly. O oh, pitiful, loving Savior, amid all his physical pain and mental anguish, he had a thoughtful care for his mother. He had no money with which to provide for her comfort. But he was enshrined in the heart of John. Number four. We now come to the fourth saying from the cross. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? 
darkness came down around the cross. Even inanimate nature seemed to hide its face from the terrible scene of Golgotha in sympathy with its dying author. Suddenly the sun appeared to be blotted out and at midday from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Christ is quoting these words from the 22nd Psalm, which is one of the Messianic Psalms and must have been well known as such to those around the cross. Jesus once more and for the last time calls attention to the fact that he is the Messiah and that the whole scene of his death agrees with the details of the 22nd Psalm. Here is the final proof and in their refusal to see it, it is their final rejection. We now Go on to the fifth saying of Jesus Christ from the cross. John 19.21 After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Not till he knew that all things were now accomplished, did Jesus give heed to the pangs of thirst, which made so terrible a part of the crucifixion. He had refused the stupefying draught that would have dulled his consciousness, but asked for the drink that would for a moment allay the agony of parched lips and throat. The same lips that had said, If any man thirst, let him come into me and drink. John 7.37 It was a natural cry of real need, and all Christ's bodily sufferings may be said to be summed up in this one word, thirst, the only one in which they found utterance. He who was the very fountain of living water knew the pang of thirst that everyone who thirsted might come to the living waters and drink and never thirst again. Sixth one, the sixth saying from the cross, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost, John 19.30. As Christ's life was totally unlike that of other men, so was his death. He did not live for himself. He died as he had lived, wholly for mankind, and all this by the foreknowledge and the plan of God. As someone has said, this word finished was our Savior's Amen, shout to the prophecies of the Old Testament. Therefore, that which he declared to be finished when he was about to die was the great work for which he came into the world. The personal sufferings of Christ was finished, the earthly labor was finished, the human biography was finished, the official conflict was finished, the victory had been won, Satan had been defeated, Christ had triumphed. Last but not the least, the seventh, Luke chapter 23 and verse 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Christ died with scriptures upon his lips. He was quoting the words of Psalm 31, 5. Into thy hand I commit my spirit. He yielded up his spirit. He died voluntarily. These were the last words of our dying Savior, as they have been also of thousands of his followers from that day to this. Blessed are they, wrote a great reformer who died not only for the Lord as martyrs, not only in the Lord as believers, but likewise with the Lord as breathing forth their lives in these words, into the hands I commend my spirit. Let us therefore proclaim the story of the cross of Christ to all the wide, wide world, that all who will may know its sevenfold blessing to earth's remotest bound. Thank you, Frederick Paul, for sharing God's Word on Adventist World Radio. We trust you found our program interesting and helpful. You are listening to the Voice of Hope from Pune, India. When Jesus Christ came to the earth, something better was revealed. He himself became our high priest by sacrificing his life and shedding his blood to atone for our sins. Now when we accept his gift of forgiveness, we can rejoice that the penalty of our sins has been paid and our guilt removed. Salvation through Jesus is the only way we can be forgiven and have fellowship with God. Have you found this better way? If not, to learn more on God's word, we would love to receive your letters on 
Adventist World Radio, Post Box Number Seventeen, Pune Four One One Zero Zero One, Maharashtra, India. That is Adventist World Radio, Post Box Number Seventeen, Pune Four One One Zero Zero One, Maharashtra, India. You could also email us on amc3 at vsnl dot com. That's amc3 at vsnl dot com. I'm Sophia. I'm Sharath signing out from Adventist World Radio. Join us again on our program. Until then, may you enjoy good health and God's nature. Goodbye and God bless you.